Hello, hello. It is Success Story Saturday, October 21st, 2017. Steve Cypress here along with my rhino of the day. It is this uh, Christmas orient, uh, Christmas ornament, I believe, because of this hanging thing here. At least that's what we use them for. We hang them on the tree. Uh, it's kind of a cool clay, still in one piece rhino. <laughs> How about that? And uh, he is in running fashion, and since rhinos run up to about 30 miles an hour as they charge ahead towards their goals, you could say that he is sprinting ahead. And what do you know? That's the subject of today's success story. Sun Saturday, excuse me, is a man by the name of C.L. Brown. Probably not a name that rolls off the top of the head. But uh, he founded uh, a company, a number of companies, that eventually became what is known today as the Sprint Corporation. Sprint. And that is uh, in the news here in the Cypress household because if you've been paying attention uh, for the past couple of weeks or so, it's been massive technology upgrade around here. New uh, laptop that I'm on here, new iPad Pro, new uh, internet modem, new doubled the internet speed, got a new phone system here and a new landline and today as soon as we complete this video my beautiful wife Michelle and I have finally made our decision on whether or not to get new cell phones and if so which ones and we will be headed to the Sprint store which you could have guessed when we started talking about cell phones to pick up our new cell phones now we've been with Sprint for over 15 years and we currently have the old iPhone 4 which we will be getting rid of today and getting the new iPhone, well, it's not, we'll be getting new iPhone 7s, not the latest one because I'm not the early adopting kind of guy, if you know me at all. Uh, we'll be getting iPhone 7s, which will be new to us, very exciting. They'll actually work because they'll be 4, G, T, something like that, instead of these are 3 and they don't even work in our own house, so I might even begin to use my cell phone. Who knew? And uh, so we'll see how that goes. I uh, did check the uh, usage as we were uh, like finalizing things and looking around online, and I clicked on, like, check our usage. We're, I'm using a 0.0045 of a gigabyte of data for the month so far, uh, less than half of 1%. And uh, my beautiful wife, Michelle, is using 0.05 something, like half of a percent. And uh, we don't really use it a lot. Uh, what I, I still can't get a straight answer of any, any of these people in all these different places we went about what a gigabyte is. They're like, well, do you watch a lot of movies? No, obviously, we don't even use them. Uh, I think it's just for calling and texting. Like my beautiful wife, Michelle, had used like 300 minutes of calling, and I used, which I cannot believe, my thing said I used 84 minutes of calling on my cell phone. I'm like, says who? I, I can't even, oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I used the cell phone to call the cable company when the internet goes out, which it does often, and I sit on hold for like 10 minutes at a time, so that's where the 84 minutes goes until we upgraded said internet. Like I said earlier, I was constantly calling, you know, I, we had VOIP, phone over the internet, uh, voice over internet protocol, and so uh, when the internet would go down, which it did a lot with our crappy connection, my phones would go down. I had to use the cell phone, which doesn't work in my own house. So I'd be walking down the block and holding it up in the air out in the back and do whatever I could to finally get one little dot on there to, to make the call. And after 10 minutes of on hold and press this and press that and wait for this and this and that to get disconnected over and over. So that makes sense. That's what the 84 minutes is. So doubling the speed of the Internet, adding the new modem, and then moving to a landline. Look at all that time. I didn't realize I've saved myself like a couple hours a month of calling about this internet thing. So what did we do? We went to the, uh, first we went to the Costco where they have the booth with all the different providers. So we checked them all out and the guy was like, oh, the best deal is AT&T because they give you the, and we brought in the letter. We have a letter from AT&T, right? So hey, we brought in this little flyer we get in the mail because we had uh, AT&T because we had direct TV. So this came with our direct TV, uh, direct TV bill or something, and it said go to the local, you know, your AT&T store here, and you get 25 a month off your direct TV bill if you get the eight switch to AT&T, and then zero down, and you get 650 in credit. So this seems like a fairly irresistible offer. So he was like, yep, yeah, buy one, get one free phone, 
and then did not have the phone that my beautiful wife Michelle had the color that she wanted because that's important to my beautiful wife Michelle obviously from the way I look and I dress color anything that looks is not important to me at all of course but opposites attract so you can clearly see how much things how they look matters to my beautiful wife Michelle um, other than me of course um, so uh, they didn't have that so we went over to the New York at and store uh, and we sat down with that guy, and the price that he gave us, which I wrote all down here and scribbled it all in this letter that we got, uh, was higher than it was in the Costco, but then he didn't even have the phone either. So we're like, oh, now we got to go to bed. wait till it comes in, or they had a different color. I'm like, don't you, you get a case anyway? Isn't it the case that matters and not the phone? But anyway, and then I was like, but that's that was like really high. He's like, yeah, our plans suck, but we do have, that's why we have the free phone. But our plans can't compete the sprint. He just kept saying that as he was working out the numbers. I'm like, oh, we're getting a little hint here of like greener pastures and like the grass is always greener. And after 15 years, we should leave sprint. Uh, well, it ends up no. We even checked out this AARP special with consumer cellular. It came with us with our AARP uh, membership. And it told us here, and this is where we got into like how many megabytes, gigabytes of data do you use? And that's when I looked it up. It was like point oh nothing. Um, but we checked this one out, and then it ends up we checked out Sprint, and Sprint is the best deal all along. So in fact, our phone bill is going up by eleven dollars a month, but we're getting two brand new phones instead of these two old things that don't even work. So we're going from iPhone four to iPhone sevens, brand new, and our bill's going up eleven dollars a month, and some of that is taxes and fees and whatever. So. That's the deal, folks. So we're in for that. We're heading to the Sprint store. Um, but I digress. What was I talking about is C.L. Brown, the founder of the Brown Telephone Company. So he was born in 1872, uh, just around the time the Industrial Revolution started. But back in the time where America, you want to really make America greater again, basically all Americans were self-employed. And nowadays, it's down to 13% of us that are paying almost all the taxes and employing almost all the people in the entire country. The biggest competitor, of course, being the federal government, the government employees growing out of control. Um, uh, but nowadays, so few people are supporting all the rest of the others and doing everything. What has happened to America? This whole freedom concept of America has gone out in general. And you even have nutcase liberal lefty lunatics talking about, oh, socialism and, and you know, bigger state control of everything. You want to control everything, control guns, control this, control your life, control your whatever. Like, whatever happened to freedom? Anyway, I digress again. So C.L. Brown, naturally, his father was a business owner. First of all, they moved across the country from... Pennsylvania, all the way to Kansas, just outside of Abilene, Kansas, when C.L. Brown was like eight years old, and his father, they moved right onto a, uh, a river, and they built a grist mill, and there they would, you know, grind the, chop wood and grind mills and do what grist mills do. Well, uh, like less than a year later, C.L. Brown, little eight, ten-year-old kid, gets his arm caught in the machinery and they got to amputate his arm at the elbow. And for the rest of his life, he had like a, I'm laughing, that's not funny, but for the rest of his life, he had a uh, artificial arm, you know. And uh, and he said later in life, like, greatest thing ever happened, because otherwise, of course, I was destined to just be a farmer, just, I'd be a farmer my whole life, self-employed and, and doing his own thing. But he said, I, I learned quickly, I couldn't work with my hands, I better work with my head. So he actually went to school, went to business school, and came back and... Did a couple of things before when he was about 28 years old, I think. He, he, they, him and his dad turned the grist mill into an electric generating mill, and they started an electric company, and they were serving local electric company uh, called a, brown, a local you know, rural uh, um, residence in the Abilene, Kansas area called the Brown Electric Company. Uh, and then uh, around the turn of the century, just before the turn of the century, the Alexander Graham Bell Bell Phone Company patents all ran out, and a whole bunch of these local phone companies sprang up. And Brown and his dad were like, "Hey, let's start a local phone company." Hey, hey, thanks for the likes. Who's here? Justin, Doctor Potts is here. Phil Brakefield, Michelle is here. Michelle, I'm going to see you next week, I think, right in Cleveland. And Brett Olaya is here. And so, uh, and Brett, uh, <laughs> Steve O rocks. Thank you, Brett Olaya, and thanks for the likes. Uh, and so uh, C.L. Brown and his dad, he, basically C.L. Brown now started the 
Brown Electric Company, and then they started the Brown. Um, it it was a phone company. I think they called it Brown United or something like this. Brown Electric, Brown Telegraph and Electric, because they had electric and a phone company. Then they Brown was very sharp. He started buying up other local phone companies, and they had like seven or eight or ten of them, and called it like United Telephone and Electric. Uh, this later became this. Now light bulbs are going off. Maybe if you're familiar with Sprint, because it later became United Telecommunications, United Telecom, and that became Sprint through a whole series of mergers and buyouts and whatever and this and that. So all dates back to C. L. Brown. Well, C. L. Brown under this United Telephone and Electric, I think it was called, basically a holding company. He built that to 85 different companies at its height, 85 different companies. So total entrepreneurial success story. And these are not just electric companies anymore or telephone companies. He was buying up all kinds of things. He had like uh, all kinds of uh, uh, even retail companies, including buying a grocery store that later on became Piggly Wiggly. So that branched off to be a massive uh, entrepreneurial success and a chain of grocery stores all throughout mostly the south, southeast of the U.S. Um, another thing that really set him apart is he really believed in, in, in saving money and being efficient and being thrifty. And he encouraged all of his employees to save 10% of their income and he even gave them little pins or trophy, some kind of recognition, and they join like the saving club or something. Well, he started this whole, I forget what it was called, some kind of savings club with the Brown United something or other company. And guess who was running that? It was the father of a guy named Dwight David Eisenhower, who later became a general and helped win World War II and then became president of the United States. Also, uh, you would think a lot of influence coming from C.L. Brown, this entrepreneur influencing all kinds of people. And, and by the way, back in the day, he also, by, when he bought all these local telephone companies, the story says that there was this crazy mishmash of phone wires going all over the place. And he was one of the first ever phone, his phone companies, one of the first ever to bury the phone lines under the ground and to say, hey, that's a much better way of doing that. So he was a pioneer, he was an innovator, he was an entrepreneur, bought and sold companies, and then when he had amassed the absolute fortune, fortune in the roaring 1920s, he started becoming a philanthropist and really giving all kinds, not just money, but he was uh, giving basically uh, everything he could do to sustain his employees. He gave them housing, uh, and, and that was the, some, uh, I forget, I think it was called the Sunflower House or something, still stands to this day. So he had to build a whole mansion to house any, I think it was single women uh, that were working for his company, that weren't married, didn't have a husband, take care of them, whatever. Housed them all, fed them all, any times of trouble, he took care of people, he gave them free this and that and whatever. He built a, a um, what, what would now be known as an amusement park. That cost back in that day supposedly like a thousand dollars a day to run, and he charged no admission. It was free, and so that that of course now the Great Depression hit at the end of the nineteen twenties, and obviously that thing is gone. And when he passed away, basically all this stuff is gone because he was footing the bill for all of it, and he was leveraged up to the hilt because of doing all this great stuff for people. And he also had a, uh, I think there's still in Abilene, Kansas, to this day something like the Brown Memorial building and the Brown Memorial Fund and the this and the that and whatever the whole town still screams of C.L. Brown. But uh, unfortunately, because of the Depression, and actually check that, this out, during those days in the Depression, millions of Americans canceled their phone service. Now think to nowadays where we just, we're barely coming out of the worst recession since the Great Depression and the, it, which to always be known to me as the Obama recession years of disastrous economy. And, uh, but who, who canceled their phone service? First of all, nobody would cancel the phone service. Nobody would even cancel their phone lines, not to mention all kinds of people getting their Obama phones. <laughs> like how ironic that like nobody would cancel their phone service today, no matter how bad the depression got, because phones aren't just phones anymore, right? They call these smartphones. My beautiful wife, Michelle, and about to head off and get our two new ones. And they're basically little computers. 
So they're everything to people. Like people cancel their home phone lines nowadays, and they cancel their cable TV because they they watch everything on their phone. They talk to people on the phone. They watch things on their phone. They learn on the phone. They get these apps and check into everything. I'm I'm going to be traveling next week to two different events. They're all like, oh, the airlines are like checking here, and the hotels are get our app and get this app and get that app. Open a new bank account yesterday, and they're like, oh, get our app and what. These are all done on these magical phones, which nobody cancels anymore. But anyway, through the canceling of all the phone lines, through all the debt he was in when the Depression hit, C.L. Brown, when he died, was bankrupt, destitute. Uh, Sad ending to an amazing story of an amazing entrepreneur. Cleason Leroy Brown, C.L. Brown, the founder of what would become later on the Sprint Corporation which still exists to this day and has its headquarters in Overland Park, Kansas. So still, that sprint is still there in Kansas to this day. Thanks to the founder, C.L. Brown. Look him up, check it out, get inspired and uh, uh, inspiration. I've talked about this before. I'll talk about it again on a a Wisdom Wednesday. But uh, inspiration that comes from the outside, motivation comes from the inside. So when you read about or you watch these videos about successful entrepreneurs and hear their stories, it inspires you to think big and move from, hey, I'm helping dad operate the grist mill or operate a farm, and that's what I thought I'd do my whole life, to like, hey, guess what? Accidentally, I'm going to do something big. Now I'm going to start an electric company. Let's turn this grist mill thing. It's right on the river. gets its power. Let's turn that into electric power. Then let's start a phone company. Then let's buy up others. Let's build a whole empire. Then let's buy all kinds of other businesses, start retail stores. And, and then let's start foundations and build an amusement park and give the money away and do all kinds of things and, like, make a big imprint. Why not? Why not go from business owner to entrepreneur? from just hoping the phone rings enough that you can get out there and do enough doing of whatever you do to get by and pay the bills and self-employed and you have a job, you work for yourself, but you have a job, to entrepreneur, always looking to expand, always looking to build a new business or take on a new opportunity and to grow. Why not? You're living in America. Still, the socialist, liberal lunatics have not gotten a hold of this country enough yet that they've rubbed out free enterprise and freedom and opportunity, which is what, to me, this country and life is all about. So hoping that you take advantage, share your success stories with me. In fact, I'd love to interview anybody out there that feels you're any kind of a success in your industry or overall in your life or in general. I'd love to interview you and feature you here on Success Stories Story Saturday. Let me know. As always, at the end, I'll go to the questions, comments, concerns, and <laughs> I will put on the glasses to read them. And Jer Dog is here. Great seeing you, Jer Dog. Uh, Jen is here. Thanks for being here. And Phil says, now I am intrigued. Wonder if there is any relationship to H.H. Brown, a massive footwear company. It's Google time. In the middle of my video? That's what I get for intriguing Phil and inspiring him to search on Google, which I wonder if he is searching on a Sprint phone. Who knows? How ironic or how... uh, uh, a, a coincidental that would be uh, and uh, Brett Olaya says great story thank you very much Brett Olaya I enjoy uh, helping business owners I help I enjoy relating success stories I love watching and reading all kinds of biographies of successful business owners it inspires me and it helps me to help my clients and hopefully inspire them to be even better people like to say the best that we can but why not be even better then we think we can be just like C.L. Brown, who thought, I'm going to be a farmer my whole life, ends up multi-millionaire, successful entrepreneur, built all kinds of great things that still stand to this day. Like, he was more than he or anyone else ever thought he could be. I wish that on everybody here. Thanks for the likes. I see they're still coming across. Thanks for everybody doing that. As always, I hate any of these while the likes are coming across, but that's enough. I let you go, and I'll be back tomorrow with Sunday Fun Day, and who knows, if I can get the thing going, I might even record a Facebook Live video on my new Sprint phone that my beautiful wife, Michelle, are about to go over and get. Technically, it's an iPhone, so it's an Apple phone, but it'll be on the Sprint service that we've been on for about 15 years. And uh, I'll hail C.L. Brown for that. Be back tomorrow on Sunday Fun Day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.